Hey, what's up guys? My name is True Underdog, and I make fighting game videos. These can range from character guides, to combat tutorials, and so on. I also do the occasional reaction video, and play online every now and then. But today, I'll be pointing out everything that's wrong with Gaming Sin's Mortal Kombat review. This whole idea originally started out as a joke, but it actually got a lot of support. So I decided to make it after all. That being said, this is all in good fun. In no way is this supposed to bash Gaming Sin's channel, or the people behind it. It's just a friendly opposition that was made for comedic purposes. That also being said, I'm about to debunk this shit hard. So let's get to it. WB Games. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give you that one. WB Games, much like EA and every other big studio, are a bunch of money-grabbing assholes, but that's kind of the nature of the beast. If you want good games, then the producers kind of always have to be money-grabbing assholes. Easy Fatalities. Wait, so I'm confused here. Are you mad about the Easy Fatalities? or you might have to pay for them, because you really don't have to pay for them. It's completely optional. I unlock them all the time just playing the game. This game's PC launch. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give you that one. But to be fair, Warner Brothers is the king of terrible PC launches. Seriously, they're really good at it. You got the Batman games, you got the Mortal Kombat. The list goes on. They're terrible at it. Having to pay $5 for a set of easy fatalities, even though you can literally pause the game to do the fatality and finish off your opponent. Ah, uh, okay, so you are mad about the whole having to purchase them thing. Well, you don't really have to purchase them, it's just an option. And I agree that microtransactions suck, and I'll cover it more a bit later on in the video. But at the same time, you don't always get to pause the game to do a fatality, especially not online. I mean, you could rush through it and try, but it's likely not going to happen. So easy fatalities are kind of a nice option for really, really casual players. They're also a lot of fun if you play Test Your Luck, because sometimes the credentials are to do a fatality on your opponent first, and easy fatality makes it so good. Even two best friends have actually used the easy fatalities before to win test your luck matches. I'm just saying. And since this set is $5, we're gonna add five sins! Well, to be fair, it's not $5 for every easy fatality. That would be absurd. It's $5 for 30, which is still reaching a bit, but at the same time, microtransactions don't really harm anybody. Especially when they can be unlocked in the game, and seeing as how you don't need to really use the easy fatalities, I don't see why it's a sin at all. It's honestly just a really easy way to make money exploiting idiots. See these Cold War and Brazil packs? Yeah, they're not included in the season pass. You gotta purchase them separately. So, to all of you who did get the season pass, do you feel like a sucker now? Because you should. And since both skin packs are $4 each, we're gonna add 8 total sins. Nah, I don't really feel like a sucker. Mainly because I am getting all the characters and a lot of DLC skins. I'm not getting these two in particular, but god forbid you're forced to pay for something that took a lot of time to make. As someone who's worked on texturing, and modeling, and rigging, and animating, stuff like this is not cheap. It takes a lot of manpower and a lot of time. It's worth money. You should have to pay for it. And it's honestly not very expensive when you consider that it's $4 for three different skins. I know of a lot of games that would charge you $4 for just one skin. This is actually quite generous. Gamers today are pretty spoiled. See this Cold War Scorpion skin? It was a pre-order bonus exclusively at GameStop. <laughs> and look at it now. It's free! Further proving that pre-order bonuses are completely full of shit. Okay, so here's the thing I never understood. A pre-order bonus is also free. You're just spending $5 in advance. It's not $5 on top of the game's price. You're still paying 60 bucks. so the Cold War Scorpion skin was free for everybody. I do not understand this sin whatsoever. Blue Steel Sub-Zero is basically a recolored version of the Gold Scorpion skin. And the worst part is, you actually gotta pay for this one. And since it's $2, we're gonna add two sins. Alright, I'll admit, this one originally upset me too, until I learned that all of the funds that paid for this costume went towards a fighting game tournament for Mortal Kombat X. That got me really excited and really hype. I think more fighting games should offer DLC content and then make the money go towards a tournament. That's a really solid idea. Thumbs up to Netherrealm. I actually love that idea. And again, $2 for a skin? Ain't asking that much. Do you have money to waste? Do you not have enough time? Do you want to unlock all the goodies the easy way because you suck at Mortal Kombat? Well, pay $20 to unlock all the crypt items! And since this option is even in the damn game and it costs $20, we're gonna add 20 sins! Alright, so I can understand if unlocking these items actually gave you some sort of advantage, that it would be unfair, but it doesn't. The game doesn't change at all by unlocking the crypt items. You just get more cosmetically appealing things like costumes and fatalities, but the gameplay doesn't change at all as far as competitiveness goes. And to be completely honest, I don't like microtransactions at all, guys, but you gotta consider the alternative. These are money-grabbing companies. They are always greedy. If they can't get money this way, they'll find some worse way to make money. 
like monthly subscriptions, and I would never want that for a fighting game, and it definitely could happen if enough people complain about these microtransactions. The fact of the matter is, microtransactions are not great, but they're much better than something worse like paying for monthly subscriptions. And once again, it's completely optional. You don't have to buy any of this stuff. It's not like when you play a mobile game and you have to buy the microtransactions to play the game properly. These are entirely optional, and they really don't take away from the experience at all. It's just that people that have a lot of money to burn can just unlock everything right away. That's not really a big deal. It's not even really a sin. And you want to know what's even worse? They deliberately gimped coin earnings regardless of what difficulty you play on. So just for that, add 20 more sins! I do agree, it's a bit lame how they cut the coins down. But at the same time, it makes the game last longer. How boring would it be if you could buy all the stuff in the crypt in like the first month? That would be absurd. That being said, there are some hardcore gamers out there who probably could do the whole thing in like a month. So now it's been extended to like two months. That's good, I actually like that. You shouldn't be able to unlock everything in a game right away. It extends the life of the game. And if you didn't pre-order Mortal Kombat X, you did not get Goro, even though he's already on the damn disc locked behind a paywall. And since he's $5 if you didn't pre-order, we're gonna add five more sins. Alrighty, once again, pre-ordering does not cost anything. It's just $5 down. So Goro's actually free if you pre-order, and if you don't pre-order, he just costs $5. $5 for a full character is a really, really, really good deal. If you don't understand that, then you gotta try working in 3D animation so you understand the pipeline. That's a modeler, plus a rigger, plus an animator, plus a texturer, and a programmer. All those things back to back. It ain't cheap. So charging $5, not a big deal. And pre-ordering doesn't cost you anything. I don't understand this argument whatsoever about pre-orders ruining games. It's just beyond me. Classic Katana, Classic Melina, Ninja Mime Johnny, Injustice Scorpion, and Farmer Jax are only available to unlock through the stupid mobile game. I don't understand what's wrong with giving the player incentive to play the mobile game. I also don't see anything wrong with rewarding the player for playing the mobile game. What's wrong with that? And the game's actually pretty damn good for a mobile game. Honestly, you're just nitpicking. I don't, I don't get it. There is nothing wrong with being rewarded for playing a different version of the game. Hell, PS1 games do that all the time. You play the first game, then the sequel comes out, you get rewarded for playing the first game. Here, you can reward it for playing a sister game. That's no big deal at all. Combat pack is $30. $30 for four characters and some skins. That's half the price of the game if you bought it day one. And since the combat pack is $30, you know what that means. 30 more sins. Alrighty, now these sins are especially unfair. This all came out post-game, meaning they are hiring modelers, animators, scripters, texturers, and riggers all after the games come out. They can't do that for free. They deserve to get paid. And $30 for that many characters is not a big deal. Most games, especially Japanese fighting games, will have you buy an entirely new game just for two new characters. Yeah, they seriously do that. I ain't making that shit up. They do that. And here you're getting to pay $30 for four new characters. That's actually a really good deal. And you're not getting it for free. So it's not a sin. It's actually a nice luxury. Plus, these characters are all really, really good and they're continually balanced out after they've been released. It's a really good deal. Netherrealm's pretty awesome about this stuff. No sins for this. It's just ridiculous. You can't give sins for this. And if you ever wondered why WB Games gets counted as a sin, it's because they are directly responsible for the bullshit business practices that I just listed. So now you know. It is true that they are money-grabbing companies. I agree. But money-grabbing companies give you better games. And seeing as how here it's a bunch of microtransactions that you don't have to do, as well as DLC content that you don't have to buy, that's pretty damn fair. Faction Wars. Sounds good on paper, ultimately pointless. I mean, I wouldn't say it's pointless. Every time a faction wins, you get money, regardless of whether or not your faction actually won. I love how when I do guides or play online, I'm getting paid every couple of weeks in coins just because my team won or even didn't win. I'm getting free coins. That's pretty awesome, actually. I love the Faction Wars. It's also a lot of fun to compete with your friends who are in different factions. It may be a tiny little small part of the game, I actually love it. Millions of years ago, Shinnok, one of the Elder Gods, turned on his fellow deities and invaded the Earth Realm. Previously on Mortal Kombat. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that exposition is now a sin? I'm pretty sure in other games you called out sins for not explaining the past games. Get your shit together, dog. I'm confused here. I'm getting a lot of mixed signals from you. Video game cliche number 13, some random guy just standing around gawking out the obvious threat in front of him. That is not a video game cliche, that is a cinema cliche. And to be fair, if you're just a regular dude and a goddamn demon jumps up in front of you, what are you gonna do? 
bullets clearly don't hurt him, and he's obviously coming for your ass. You could try to run, but he can fly, and definitely flies faster than you run, so you're kind of just fucked anyway. What did you want this soldier to do? You have the rendezvous coordinates, far into the forest. From there we access the portal to Raiden's Sky Temple. Where there's an angry former elder god and his devils waiting for us. Gods, portals, flying demons. Okay, there's a few problems with this. This game takes place two years after Mortal Kombat 9, right? Why are these guys acting like gods, portals, and demons or something new? Uh, probably because they're average Joes. Why would average Joes know about all this stuff? The only people who actually know are guys who participate in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Outside of that, everyone's pretty ignorant to the whole scenario. Second, there's a portal to Raiden's Sky Temple? Doesn't that make it easier to invade him? Oh well, yeah, it definitely does. But how do you expect regular Joes like Johnny Cage and Kenshi to get to the Sky Temple? Last time I checked, they don't have wings, and helicopters probably can't go that high, and it's probably defended by some sort of magic barrier that the gods use, so you kinda need a portal. And lastly, even though this game does take place two years after Mortal Kombat 9, Quan Chi and Shinnok are just now executing their invasion? When literally at the end of Mortal Kombat 9, they were ready? Alrighty. Now I admit that I don't like how games don't explain all their story, but that's just kinda how it is nowadays. Even Halo games don't explain all of their lore. You have to read the books. And the same is true here. In order to understand what happened in that two year gap, you have to read the Mortal Kombat X comic books, which I strongly recommend that you do, because they are very enjoyable and they're free on YouTube. You can literally just watch some guy read them out loud, or just read them yourself. It's pretty great, I actually enjoyed them a lot. They're really good comic books in my opinion. Get out there and read them. The world has changed. For the worse, if we do not expel Shinnok from Raiden's temple, he means to poison Earthrealm's life force, the Jinsei. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jinsei? Life force of Earthrealm? 23 years of Mortal Kombat, and we're just now learning about this? <laughs> Man, Netherrealm really is making this shit up as they go along. How have you never heard about the Jinsei? How do you not know about Earthrealm's life force? Which, it, it, it's been in a lot of games. Holy shit, man, you're just being ignorant right now. Either that, or you're pretending to be. Which doesn't really matter, it's still a sin on your end. Come on, man. Quick time events. In Mortal Kombat. Why? Why? Especially when there's no consequence if you fail them. Pointless! Alright, now hold on a minute. I can understand being mad at QTEs if you could fail them, because that ruins the pacing of the story. But since you can't fail them, you're still complaining? Why? It just encourages interactivity in the cutscenes, otherwise the player is just sitting there and probably gets bored and looks away. This is a great way to encourage the player to always have that controller and always be paying attention. And since you can't fail them, it's just a nice little fun minigame for the player. How is that a sin? How on earth is that a sin? Look at this bullshit. This is exactly what I'm talking about. He is getting frozen and burned by Scorpion and Sub-Zero at the same time. And somehow he manages to survive. Because he's Johnny Cage. Get the hell out of here. To be fair, if you're being burned and frozen at the same time, they would just negate each other. I find that entire scenario kind of funny. Since cold is the absence of heat, that means it would just take all the firepower away. Johnny Cage wouldn't be hurt at all. Plus, that only happens if you fail the QTE. And by the way, can I just say that I love how if you fail the QTE, you get a different animation? That's awesome, I just honestly love that. Also, can we mention how ridiculous it is that Johnny Cage is beating both Scorpion and Sub-Zero? This is like Dan beating up on Ryu and Ken, it's fucking embarrassing. Alright, now bear with me. This is Netherrealm setting up very on in the story that Revenants are not as strong as the actual warriors themselves. I mean for Pete's sake, Raiden beat all the Revenants by himself in MK9, so it's obvious that Revenants aren't as strong as the real deal, which makes sense since they have no free will at all. They're kinda just zombies, fighting at about half capacity. So Johnny Cage could probably do it. Plus, let's be fair, Johnny Cage has been kicking Scorpion's ass ever since the first movie. Scorpion really ain't that strong. What has he ever done in MK lore that's that impressive? He's just a ninja who died and then got fire because he went to hell. He's just a fire-bending ninja. There ain't nothing special about him. Now, Sub-Zero is pretty powerful. That's been explained countless times in the MK lore. However, he's also a revenant, which makes him a jobber. Johnny Cage could have easily shadow kicked Scorpion here, but spears him instead. I agree. That is totally a sin as far as the cinematic is concerned. However, it serves a very valuable purpose. It allows Johnny Cage and Scorpion to fight on this specific stage. If Johnny Cage had just kicked Scorpion out of the helicopter, we wouldn't have a reason for why they're fighting on this stage right now. The end is near. The end is near, trope. I'll give you that one. But to be fair, Scorpion is nothing but tropes like that. All of his one-liners are super cliche and predictable. It's kind of why we love Scorpion. Boy, look at this MK movie rematch, where Johnny Cage will win once again because the game demands it. Did you just reference a movie and then say the game demands it once again? You're comparing two different mediums right there. 
Gotta get back to the chopper. Ha ha ha. Would have made more sense if you were fighting against Predator. It would have, but seeing as how Predator was made after the game came out, it's not possible. Sonya, get out of there! Hey, remember when Sub-Zero froze somebody and they instantly shattered? And see, this is the biggest problem in story mode. The characters who shouldn't be that strong are OP as fuck, and the characters who should be strong are total weaklings. It's games like, special forces all the way, fuck everybody else. <laughs> you will pay us attention and you will give us our fair due. No, I won't. And no, I won't. Okay, so when in the games has Sub-Zero ever frozen a guy and then instantly shattered them? That's never ever happened in the game. In the movie, yeah, but you established earlier how the movie is garbage, and now you're referencing it? I don't understand why you're going to a source material that you clearly have a problem with. In the games, the freezing power isn't that strong, it just holds them in place. Hell, I'll be damned. It is an easier way to invade Raiden Sky Temple. You gotta have better security, my friend. How is that a sin? Earlier you said it makes no sense, and then you explained how it could make sense, then they verified how it makes sense in the same way that you wanted them to, and you're giving it a sin? What the fuck is going on? Also, Fujin is not a playable character in this game. Alright, there's a big difference between a character being hand-animated during a cutscene and being programmed as a character in the game. The difference is like a week of scripting. So get the hell out of here. We must re-fortify the portal's defenses below. No, Fujin. It is too late. Raiden would be excellent at gaming sins. Why the hell would you re-fortify the defenses below when they've already made it to the top? Wait, 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 wait. You just agreed with Raiden and then you gave it a sin. What the- Who the hell is pushing that sin button? Tell them to quit it. They're too trigger happy. Surely you are pleased to see your friends. I just love how it's like, Cabal, Sindel, and Guy that nobody cares about. <laughs> oh, by the way, where's Jade again? All right, now a lot of people are upset that Jade's not in the game, myself included, but like Ed Boon himself once said, less than 1% of players online actually use Jade. So the fact is, you may have liked seeing her, but nobody liked playing her. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Sindel wipe out 90% of Earthrealm's cast in the last game? Why would Quan Chi refer to her as Raiden's friend? That is a very, very, very solid point. I agree with you on this one 110%. That line makes no sense. Prototype Jax. How is that a sin? Jax looks fucking awesome. In fact, if you were to do a survey, I can guarantee you that most players love that skin to death. Smoke. Smoke is dead. I... I'm an Whoa, an Enra? So is Smoke's ending from MK9 canon? That's what he referred to himself after he beat Shao Kahn. Burned alive, he returned to the mortal realm as an Anenra, a creature of smoke and vapor. Now aware of his true identity, Smoke understands he is no mere assassin. His destiny has been revealed. So that means Smoke is the real champion of Mortal Kombat! Well, game doesn't bother to care about details, so ding! Alright, that ending cutscene from MK9 literally is just a flashback explaining Smoke's origin. In other words, he has always been an Anemra. He just refers to himself that way now. Because Smoke technically did die, but his Anemra is still here. You see the logic, right? It doesn't have to connect both games together. He always was that thing. Nothing to do with the ending at all. So, um, take the ding away. The real Jax wouldn't punch his best friend. Johnny Cage, killing you will be a pleasure. Okay, there's a couple problems with this. First of all, the real Jax currently in this scene is dead, so there's no point in bringing that up. Second, are the Revenants just evil versions of themselves? I mean, they seem to retain the same memories, even pointing out the names of their comrades. Like, what's the point in brainwashing them to become your servants if they can retain the same memories? What about the off chance that their spirit, who has the memories, can fight against the corruption of the Nether Realm? Why not just erase their memory entirely so that they can become completely obedient into serving Shinnok? Confusing shit, ain't it? If you erased all their memories, they wouldn't know how to fight. Half of the combat comes from their experience of fighting people. If you wipe all their memory, then they wouldn't be able to fight. At least not very well. At the same time, the Revenants aren't brainwashed. They are literally just evil versions of the same person. So imagine if all the stuff that happened in your life was seen through a sort of evil filter, so that everything good was rationalized to be bad, and everything bad was rationalized as a good thing. That's basically what's kind of happening here. It's like an evil necromantic kaleidoscope. Sento contains the souls of my ancestors. They guide me. Thanks for that random exposition, Kenshi. Alright, I half agree with you on this one. It is a bit random, but at the same time it helps the player understand Kenshi's character. 
especially if MKX is their first game, and for a lot of players, it probably is. Man, this is some straight up MK Deception bullshit right here. What's wrong with MK Deception bullshit? Video game cliche number 14, couple of characters just standing around gawking at the obvious threats surrounding them. As opposed to what? Running away from a shadow or a fog? Yeah, that's much more helpful, I'm sure. Big mistake in giving Shinnok pupils for his eyes. It makes him less sinister, thus less threatening. I actually disagree completely. As an animator myself, I can tell you right now that a character's pupils are a great way to indicate line of sight. You kinda need them. Just FYI, Shinnok's amulet is one of the most powerful talismans in all of Mortal Kombat. It's basically the Kami Dogu which has the power to end existence itself. Just keep that in mind. Actually, that's not true. The amulet is the combination of every single Kami Dogu. It is quite powerful. However, its only real function is to trap gods or use the god's power and direct it. That's really all it can do. Uh, saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. Agreed. It is a cliche. But would you prefer the alternative of Raiden and Fujin just dying right there and Johnny Cage showing up late? Because I'm pretty certain that you would count that as a sin too, which is completely unfair. Miserable wretch! Insignificant speck of feculent scum! How dare you! Well, there goes your intimidation, cred. No wonder why you got your Elder God license revoked. What? I love that line. I thought it was super funny, and I think it fits his character pretty well. That is mine! Elder God Shinnok resorts to a 12-year-old who got his toy stolen. Wait, what would you rather him say? I'm pretty sure that is mine is a universal term that all age groups use. Shinnok channels his inner Neo, which normally would be badass, but it only makes him look more ridiculous. Really? Because every Let's Player I've watched fucking loses their shit during that scene and thinks that it's fucking rad. Well, you guys just witnessed it. Johnny Cage's shadow energy can block out the power of Shinnok, a former Elder God. See what I mean by certain characters being OP as fuck? They literally explain this immediately after the fight scene, after the time skip. Were you seriously just not paying attention? Because if not, I'll explain it later, but they definitely explain it. Just watch the story mode. I'm not sure what just happened to me, but I am sure of this. You don't even think of hurting her. Well, he was just about to claim her soul, you idiot. Does that not hurt her? I'm pretty sure having your soul ripped out hurts pretty damn bad, seeing as how she was screaming in pain. Okay, Johnny Cage defeating Shinnok. Sell this to me. Justify this. Don't use story mode as an excuse. Legitimately explain to me how this happens. I will count this as a sin as I wait for your response. Alright. A lot of people seem to be confused about this fight. They don't understand how Johnny Cage is strong enough to defeat an Elder God. But it's not really a direct strength thing. It's more of a Kryptonite versus Superman kind of thing. You see, Johnny Cage may not be strong enough to beat characters like Liu Kang or Ermac, but his shadow powers are like Kryptonite to Shinnok. They actually explain this in the following cutscene, that Johnny Cage is part of a Mediterranean war race that were bred, quote-unquote, for the gods. Now, this could be interpreted several ways. The first way is that they were bred by the gods. However, seeing as how the shadow power clearly defeated Shinnok, who is a god, I believe that bred for the gods means bred to defeat the gods. And that's why Johnny Cage could beat Shinnok. Why, in the name of all the realms that exist, would Shinnok create an amulet that could imprison him? There has got to be some part of MK lore that I missed because this is incomprehensible. Not to me. People always create things that destroy them. Like when America created the atom bomb. Now everybody has a goddamn atom bomb. There are nukes everywhere. Plus, like I said earlier, Shinnok's amulet absorbs gods and can use godly powers. That's literally all it does. In fact, Shinnok himself was already imprisoned in that amulet beforehand in the Mortal Kombat X comics. So this makes the second time that he's been imprisoned inside that thing. Which is pretty funny. Uh, Sonya Blade is no damsel in distress. But I guess the writers were like, fuck it, she is now! What are you talking about? I admit that Sonya is a strong and independent woman, but she has been captured and rescued more times than I can count on both hands. Hell, have you ever seen Shaolin Monks when she literally gets her ass kicked by Baraka, who's a total fucking jobber? I mean, she was captured four times in MK9 alone. If you combine all the games, it's just too much effort to keep track. Trust me. Remain here. The Chamber's properties will heal Sonya Blade in short order. You want to know who could have also used some healing? Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Katana, Jade, Nightwolf, Smoke, Cabal. You know everybody who died in MK9? Literally none of those people were anywhere near the Jinsei Chamber. That argument is completely invalid. Let us take the amulet to the Elder Gods. They cannot destroy it. 
No one can. Oh, great. Elder Gods confirmed for garbage tier. Like, what's the point, man? The point is to bring Shinnok back later for a climactic final battle. Like, duh. You ever watched any action movie ever? The war is not over. Quan Chi has escaped. Why are you smiling? Hey, you're blind. How can you tell that he's smiling? The same way that he fights people? Do you honestly think that Kenshi can't see? Johnny Cage's default costume. Absolutely wretched. Alright, that's an opinion, not a sin. That being said, you do have your right to your own opinions. That also being said, justify it. Justify it right now. Because you cannot just say, this is bad. That would imply it's a fact, and it's definitely not. How about you, Cassie? Can you summon anything like that? Or did it skip a generation? Hey Kung Jin, you know that other Kung that's like a million times better than you? And that other Kung before him that's also a million times better than you? Did Shaolin badassery skip a generation? I wouldn't call the great Kung Lao that badass. He got his ass kicked by Goro, which is kind of understandable. But keep in mind that Liu Kang beat him, and Ermac, and Shang Tsung. Even Kung Lao could beat Goro and Kentaro. And to be fair, Kung Jin does do a lot of badass stuff in this story mode. And he's totally top tier in tournaments. You're all here because you deserve to be. You're beautiful and unique snowflakes. Snowflakes. How the hell is that a sin? Today is our team's six week anniversary. Sorry bruh, but a six week anniversary for anything is a sin. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give you that one. That being said, everyone listening, girlfriends will make six week anniversaries. So if you got a girlfriend, keep track of that shit. It's coming. He was smart enough to have Mr. Cage put this team together. I'm glad the Shira Ryu chose me to join. New places, new faces. I'm totally into you, but I'm gonna act all disgusted face. Dude, that is every girl ever. And definitely not a sin. It's kinda cute and adorable. Why be worried about Outworld? I thought Kotal Khan respected the Reiko Accords. Mortal Kombat Commandments number 8. Thou shalt not speak of thy lame characters such as Reiko. Yeah, you heard me right. I said Reiko is a lame-ass character. Bootleg Shao Kahn gets no props from us. To be fair though, he does play a very large role in the Mortal Kombat X comics. Seriously, he's the guy who single-handedly summons Shinnok, and then is soon killed summoning Shinnok. Yeah, he's kinda garbage dear, but he's still important to the story. Ladies and gentlemen, the Outworld Civil War. By far the most interesting storyline in this game. Too bad you won't be spending too much time on it. You'll have to read the prequel comic for that. Very, very true. I would have enjoyed much more of the Civil War in the game. I agree with this guy 110% on this one. The two most badass characters in the game are resorted to measly henchmen, who will get a grand total of five minutes of screen time, combined. I agree again. That is definitely a sin. I will give credit where credit is due. They deserved so much more screen time. Accident ahead. This one will clear it. So are you a Hanar now? This one lied. This one deceived. This one does not play second fiddle to Kotal Khan. Well, actually, the reason she speaks in third person is because she is made up of over a thousand different bugs. So when they speak collectively, they refer to themselves as this one. It's called third person. Diva walk! As a 3D animator myself, I love that animation. You can go fuck off. And that is the one time I will curse in this entire video. Probably. I see that Rain is still rocking his goofy sultan look. I personally like Rain's new outfit. It's an opinion, but still, I love his new outfit. See, this is exactly why time jumps suck. They're lazy, and if you didn't read the prequel comic, you'd be like, well, how the hell did she get the amulet? Details, man. They are important. Yet earlier you complained about previously on Mortal Kombat. So do you like exposition or do you not like exposition? I am so confused by your hypocrisy. You are so back and forth. I'm getting so many mixed signals. I am beyond confused by you. What do you want? Tell me what you want. The rain falls when it may. Puns, quips, jokes. Hey, you use them too. So you are equally guilty here. My goodness, look at this stupid bullshit of Ermac, one of the most powerful characters in all of Mortal Kombat, moving one crate at a time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so funny though. You know, this fight is quite one-sided. Let's make it a little bit more fair. It should be one-sided. Why is Kano considered to be strong ever? The guy's only superpower is being Australian and having a Terminator eye. That's literally all he has going for him. I would understand if he had some bionic enhancements in his body, but that has never been implied or shown. Honestly, Kano should have died in this fight. And that way, this fight is completely unrealistic. You may think that story characters are OP, but Kano should have already been dead in the first 10 seconds fighting Kotal Khan. 
the guy loses to everybody in story mode. He's a total henchman. You wound me, Kano. Your offer of aid was but wind and air. Well, I hate to break it to you, Kotal Khan. You trusted Kano, so you get exactly what you deserve. I agree completely. Why the hell does everyone trust Kano? He always betrays people. Which is more mind-boggling, because you have to trust him to begin with in order to get betrayed by him. How do you trust that face? Just look at it. Blah, it's gross. And speaking of Kotal Khan, I really hate how Netherone made him so skinny. He is a Khan, the Emperor of Outworld. He should be the most physically imposing character in the game. Look at this. Look at the select screen. Kano is more physically imposing than Kotal Khan, okay? And I'm a big fan of Kano, but this is ridiculous. I wouldn't say he's more physically imposing. Kotal Khan is much taller. That being said, Kotal Khan is a bit of a fraud. He is nowhere near as strong as Shao Kahn or any other Khan that came before. He acts a lot tougher than he is because he really isn't that strong. If you cut off his line of sight to the sun, he is a paperweight pushover. Damn, Tanya's looking sexier than ever. And I feel ashamed saying that. It's like, hey, Tanya, now that you got lighter skin, you look a little bit more attractive. Not cool. Well, the Adenians are modeled after Egyptians, so it makes sense that her skin could be lighter or darker. They just chose a lighter skin this time around. I'm not really for it or against it. I don't know, it's not really a sin. Melina. Kano was to kill you, miserable snake! The hell are you talking about, Melina? You were watching the entire fight! That doesn't mean that Kano wasn't supposed to kill him. Watching it doesn't make it suddenly not supposed to be the way things went down. Well, here you go, people. Evident proof. Rain is a fully functional character, yet he is not a playable character in the game. I'm guessing he will be saved for combat pack number two later down the road. Blame it on the WB! Alrighty. He brings this point up multiple times in this video, and they are all completely wrong. None of the characters in story mode are fully functional. Just look at Tanya. Her animations are half Katana's animations, and the other non-playable characters in story mode have no x-ray, no intro dialogues, no victory animation, no brutalities, no fatalities, and the list goes on and on and on. They also have no variations and stuff like that. They are not completely functional, and shame on you for saying it. That being said, I really do hope that Rain is in combat pack 2, and I got my fingers crossed. You won't touch him again. Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him before someone strikes your hand off! Wait! Alrighty, you all know that I'm biased here. I love Rain. He is one of my favorite characters in the game, and I have no idea why. That being said, if you had killed him right there, I would have been a bit upset. It also would have made the story mode a lot less interesting. I don't know, I don't think you should kill off characters like Rain, seeing as how they don't really have any story yet. I want to see them expanded on. Rendezvous here. The north entrance. Then what? A simple pick up and go? We bag him if he resists. Resistance might be more possible than you think. Don't sweat it. It comes to that, Sub-Zero won't know what hit him. <laughs> you guys actually think you can bag Sub-Zero. You guys are hilarious! Oh, to be a teenager and extremely ignorant, Sub-Zero is stronger than 90% of the cast. It's obvious that Cassie Cage is way in over her head, but she's also too cocky to admit it. Just like her father. And a little bit like her mother, too. Okay, this statue looks strikingly similar to Quan Chi. Now, I am aware that Quan Chi hired the Lin Kuei to capture Shinnok's amulet, and in return he would wipe out the Shirai Ryu, which did happen in this timeline. However, in one of Sub-Zero's intros, he says this. I am not your enemy. Then why reform the Lin Kuei? We have debts to repay. Now, if you truly wish to repay your debts, why not destroy this statue of Quan Chi and start anew? Why do you keep bowing to it even if it's just to lure in the special forces? Well, since the game doesn't bother to care about details, it's getting counted as a sin. Honestly, I do not think that's the Quan Chi statue. I think it's a statue of one of the old Lin Kuei Grandmasters. That being said, it definitely does look like him, and I think it's because they Frankensteined his head to save time for modeling purposes. That's my theory anyway. Okay, you want to know the real sin here? And quite frankly, one of the biggest sins throughout the game? Check this out. So Sub-Zero single-handedly takes out this entire Young Justice League of Earthrealm. And yet, by the end of the game, they're the ones that end up saving Earthrealm. So basically, if they're not the playable character, they exist only to job and make you look good. The inconsistency levels are beyond astronomical. To be fair, Sub-Zero did not beat them single-handedly. You can see them fighting the Lin Kuei in the background the entire time. So they're fighting about 30 people, plus Sub-Zero. That's actually a pretty impressive feat. 
That being said, they don't save the day. Only one of them does. The rest literally just buy time. Got a new plan, Cage? You could have followed the old one, Jin. Jackie would be excellent at gaming sins. We'd hire her if she was real. I think you should. That way your videos wouldn't be so much bullshit. I mean, I know it's supposed to be sarcastic and all, and that it's all for comedic purposes, but too many people take this shit seriously and actually condemn games for these videos, which is absurd. That's not why they exist. They exist to be funny, not to point out actual facts. Come on now. You're all winners in my book. Yeah, even though you all got your asses kicked by Sub-Zero single-handedly. Again, not single-handedly. Did your eyes just omit the other 30-plus Lin Kuei members? Do you need your vision checked? Some corrective lenses? All the above? Sorry, Sonya. There is only one hot blonde fighting game chick that can rock the unusually long braided pigtails. And you are not her. Alright, I'm gonna ask one more time if you need corrected vision. Because there are no braided pigtails here. There is one long braid. Are you seeing double, my friend? Do you got a backup from your computer monitor? Something like that? This is Li Mei. She seeks asylum for her people in Earthrealm. Wow, so they not only decombated Li Mei, but she also looks like a discount Kelly Hu. Funny thing is, Kelly Hu is in this game. She voices Devora. Funny how everything works out, right? Honestly, her concept art doesn't look half bad, and it looks even better in the game. The problem is the lighting. She's under a yellow light, which makes her purple and pink look brown and very dull. That's the real issue here. If she was under a white light, you'd see how cool her outfit actually looks. And might I just say, I really hope she's in combat pack too. I really, really do. A talisman, gold, with a center jewel. Melina wields its crimson energy without precision. Well, that's good then. How is that a good thing? Let me put this scenario in front of you. Some guy has a fully loaded AK-47. He's surrounded by a bunch of people. He doesn't know how to shoot. He pulls the trigger. Guess how that turns out. Pretty bad, I imagine. But I assume Cassie Cage is thinking, well, she won't be able to hit me if I move around a bunch. And she's probably right. Especially if she hides behind the crowded groups of people. She's bound to survive that way. If this talisman is what I suspect it to be, we may all pay a price. Raiden, you have one job. Protect Earthrealm. Kano was the one who stole Shinnok's amulet and gave it to Melina. How did that happen? See, this is why details are important. Yet another reason why time jumps suck. Alright, again, you complained about the exposition earlier, and now you're complaining that you don't have enough exposition. You really do need to read the comics, everybody. They're really, really good, and they explain everything. Seriously, it's worth your time to read it. Get out there and do it! Fucking do it! I'm going to the refugee camp. Gotta get to him before he finds a way out. I'll come with. Go get an update on camp security from Colonel Flagg. Why? because then you won't be here. Now, generally, romance issues are irrelevant since everybody goes to them, but this is a particular case where it does matter. How the hell did these two get to the point where they're at? What caused them to break up? How come they have so much animosity towards each other? What stick does Sonya have up her ass this week? Details, man. You know what? You already get the point. I have stated it many times before, and I will state it one last time. Read the comics. They explain everything, and they're online for free. That being said, you should purchase them because they're not very expensive, and the artists and writers do deserve to get paid for their work. Just saying. Rime has to be telling the truth. An invasion would violate the Reiko Accords. Breaking Mortal Kombat Commandments number 8 again. Ugh, I'm not even gonna debate that one. I debated it earlier. It's not an alliance. Not an aggression pact. Outworld is not our ally. A point you might make with more subtlety, given your surroundings. Sorry, Black, you did not hear this conversation amongst this huge crowd. Really? Because it sounded pretty quiet to me. I heard him just fine, and the camera was pretty far away. I can read you. You're not from Outworld. I'm from Earthrealm, like you. But my employer, Kotal Khan, is from Outworld. So now I'm from Outworld. That is some of the dumbest logic I've ever heard in my life. Come on, Black, you're a cool character. Why are you spouting out this nonsense? Really? Because it is literally a restatement of, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. Act like the Romans do. Be a part of Rome. That is literally what he's saying. How did that fly over your head? You take us to the con, I'll tell him you took us down. Maybe you get a bonus. You can't lose. Follow me. Greed. Greed is definitely a sin, so kudos to you, sir. Death? For petty theft? Remember where you are. Kung Jin once again foolishly endangers his entire group, this time risking an interdimensional war for a bread thief. Worst character in the game, confirmed. In the story mode, I would definitely agree. In the game, he is top tier as fuck. 
I think Ferator is in the wrong game. They should be in Resident Evil. I mean, come on, Tor is literally the executioner and Dr. Salvador combined. They were actually inspired by Mad Max. That being said, they would fit well in those games, but I'm also especially glad they're in this one, because they are so much fun to play. The Earth Bombers, yes. This one must learn more of your diplomatic techniques. We're here to see Kotal Khan. General Blade. You interfere with outworld matters. The penalty is death. Devor wishes to learn about their diplomatic techniques only to immediately sentence them to death. Use a troll, Devora! Use a troll! Honestly, this man speaks the truth. She is a troll throughout the entire game and betrays multiple people. She seems to have a running theme of that going on. That being said, I love playing as her. She is so much fun. But, as we honor the Reiko Accords... Breaking Mortal Kombat Commandments number 8 again! Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
What do you mean inconsistent power levels? Johnny Cage already beat Revenant Sub-Zero and Revenant Scorpion at the same time, and now he's doing it again. If it was inconsistent, he would lose this fight. You frickin' dumbass. Ah, oh, crap, I cursed again, didn't I? Johnny Cage doesn't immediately die from this. You're wondering why a character hasn't died from a mortal wound in a game like Mortal Kombat, where players never die from mortal wounds? Okay, now you're just being silly. Whoa, now I'm really confused as shit. So, the Revenants come in different bodies? If that's the case, then how come when they defeat Quan Chi later on, Jack, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero return to life in their original bodies? Um, need some clarification here. I agree with you 110% once again. This needs to be explained better, or honestly thrown out completely, because it makes no sense whatsoever. Game has interactables, but no stage fatalities. And yes, actual stage fatalities, not those bullshit stage brutalities. Those don't count. I mean, they kinda count. They're not the exact same, but you still are killing the character with the environment. So it's kind of a stage fatality, just not the same name. It's kind of 50-50, they met you halfway. Alrighty dogs, that's all I have time for today. This video took a lot longer than I thought it would, so I can't do it all in one go. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. And while you're down there, post a comment and tell me what you think. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Everything down there is allowed. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos. We have content every single week. It is never a dull moment on Underdog Gaming. So come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.